Hey everyone, this is Mike Andes, and you're listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast, episode 124. Whether you're coming to me on YouTube, Facebook Live, or on the podcast, I want to say a big thank you and uh, for coming on to the show today. Our sponsor today is LandscapeBusinessCourse.com. If you haven't checked it already, you've got to do it now because as of 10 minutes ago, the new promo video for Landscape Business Course is up on the site. So if you go to landscapebusinesscourse.com, it's like a seven or eight minute video and you're, it, it gives you five things that are keeping your small business small, five things that keep small businesses small and what you can do to change that. It gets like a seven, eight minute, totally free. And all it is is really a promo video for getting the free webinar, which is an hour long of that kind of content. So if you are in the service-based business, you're going to get huge amounts of value from it. Go to landscapebusinesscourse.com. Watch the video, seven or eight minutes long. It's really cool, entertaining, kind of like we got like a video crew to do this whole thing. And then that's going to push you to the webinar, which is one hour, and it's in two days. So you want to sign up for that. That's cool, too. And then in that webinar, we go talk about that for an hour about service-based businesses and really into landscaping and lawn care. But all sorts of service-based businesses will uh, uh, definitely benefit. And then we talk about the course, which I, I currently sell, which is... Uh, how to go from zero to hundred thousand dollars in revenue every single month with your land keep, land lawn care and landscaping business, and essentially it's just the exact tutorial step by step of what I did for the past three years. So that's cool. Landscapebusinesscourse.com. Check it out. Super excited. Okay, so today we got a question come in, and I was a little disappointed because I was hoping we could do a live boot camp here. Uh, we were trying to set it up with Stefan, who wrote this question, and it just didn't work out. So I was gonna, I figure I'd just read his email. It's kind of long, but we'll make it work, and uh, and hopefully everyone can learn something from it. So it's about photography. It's about mentorship. It's about some of the stuff that we haven't. I don't think we've ever really talked about too much here on on the show. So it's a little bit long of a question, but let me read through it. It's from Stefan. Stefan has a website called stephbphoto.com. That's S T E F bphoto.com and uh, also on Facebook at Stefan Bauman Photography. All right, so check it out. Here we go. Good morning, Mike. Just started listening last week in your podcast. I'm loving it. It helps motivate me to uh, helps help. It's helping motivate me to start moving my photography business along. I want to get to the point where I can earn enough for my photography so that I can leave my nurse assistant job, afford my health insurance and student loans, move into my own place, and most importantly, follow my passion for photography. I am often my own biggest obstacle lately because I've been a bit discouraged. I've had to learn a lot of what I know the hard way, which has been valuable but has wasted a lot of time. I've been in business since 2009, the first year or two of which was unproductive because I knew nothing about business. The rest has been trial and error, slow, gradually increase of business which is not enough to live on. I can confidently say that I produce beautiful photography, consistently and have the ability to form relationships easily. I've been published multiple times in newspapers, local magazines, the nationally distributed magazine Sambala Sun, and I've also worked as a movie set photographer. My problem is this day that through the is oh wait, sorry, his business his, my problem is through the business end. Turning passion into cash flow and generating new and return business. I also work full time in a physically and emotionally draining job as a nurse assistant in a long-term care nursing facility in order to make ends meet. I moved back with mom to help with the rent costs, but want to move closer to New York City. I currently live in Woods Upstate, far away from the clients I'd like to work with. My dream would be to be a, a, a photojournalist, documentary photographer for Time or National Geographic. Until then, I, pas I am passionately... I am pa Until then... I am passionate about working for businesses, charities, and organizations that try to help people around the world and raise awareness of important issues. I want to market myself as a photographer that can help to build their visual message and PR. I have no idea where to begin that process. Other major issue is lack of liquid funds or capital of, for my business, living paycheck to paycheck except when I get a few photo gigs. I also photograph... Photograph, sorry. Uh, I also photograph weddings, portraits, and events. It says, sorry for the long email, but in short, here are my questions. Number one, uh, let's see here. How can I raise enough capital to start actually marketing effectively, improve my website, and update 
my gear eventually. I've been hearing about small business grants for, for, for photographers and possibly cloud, cra uh, crowdsourcing. Any thoughts? And then he talked about how loans are his least favorite option. Because he's already 60 grand in debt because he went to school to be a chef. Uh, next thing, how should I approach these dream clients and set prices for that work? Most of my pricing experience has been for weddings and portraits. Thanks again, Mike. All right, so sorry for the long question. Um, Stefan, I'm going to kind of come at it from a different angle. I could talk about how you should create a YouTube channel, create a following, like kind of my general gist. Uh, but I have something very specific I want to say today. And I've been following uh, a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk, also known as Gary V. I've been following him a little bit uh, on his YouTube channel and watching his stuff. Now, if you have watched Gary Vaynerchuk's stuff, Gary Vaynerchuk, by the way, is just like a really successful entrepreneur. has a big media company called VaynerMedia in New York. Uh, but he, he does a lot of personal brand stuff, videos, has a great YouTube channel and social media and stuff like that. And so, <clears throat> but what well, I'm going to give you, Stefan, my specific instructions to someone like you and what we're going to kind of talk about really quickly today about mentors and everything is what I would recommend you do, Stefan, is find someone like Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, that needs a personal production company all right so someone that is going to be a successful entrepreneur or someone that has a very busy schedule and they would like to document all of that or they uh they do a lot of speaking and traveling and they don't have time to create a vlog but they want to create a personal brand and they're willing to invest in that and work for them as as that as that being your job so you, you literally change jobs First of all, I think you make more money doing that than being a nursing assistant. Secondly, at least you'd be getting exposure and you'd be getting experience doing something you love. But this is the reason this, this triggered my thought is, is as soon as you think of Gary Vaynerchuk's vlogs and his YouTube channel, you think of the person filming them and his name is D-Rock because what, what they, he does essentially is just follow Gary Vaynerchuk around doing all of his business stuff and they make this, this, this channel out of it. And throughout the day, several times a day, D-Rock, his name is David Rock, is the photographer, and he is mentioned because Gary is just talking to him and he's caught on camera. And then at the end, of course, the credits, he has his name as well. So everyone watching Gary Vaynerchuk's videos knows D-Rock as his photographer and as his personal brand uh, media company that he's building around himself because he doesn't have time to edit videos and create content and all that. But he has people around them doing that. And so what I would suggest to you, Stefan, and to anybody in the design and photography and filming and music is to try to get in with these people that already have a following and create a name for yourself. I guarantee you D-Rock will always have a job doing what he loves with videos because... The, the, the audience that is following Gary Vaynerchuk is business leaders and people that would also want his services. And so they see the quality of content and the great videos that he can create and the way he puts all his videos together and the way he presents Gary Vaynerchuk's brand. <clears throat> and so by doing that, by associating yourself with someone that already has a following, you skip a huge step of trying to create your own tribe and creating your own following. <clears throat> and so you can... Essentially, I would suggest literally, literally, Stefan, I think you should go go ask Barry, Gary Vaynerchuk. I know he has a group of people, probably five to ten people, that are working constantly on his YouTube channel and Facebook and like just his personal branding stuff, not actually for VaynerMedia. Um, I would actually approach either Gary Vaynerchuk or someone like him in New York City where you want to be and ask them about creating, like, and not even ask them, you know what you should do, is you should create a video, like a, a two minute video reel of the person you wanna work with. They might be someone that's super influential and in about a topic you're interested in. Like, it might not be business for, like Gary Vaynerchuk is all business, right, entrepreneurship. You might not be interested in that, but maybe there's someone that is super successful in New York City that you can follow around, document what they do, and get close in the inner circle. So number one, you're creating brand, you're creating relationships with people in that sphere, but then you're also creating a brand for yourself because now when you create content for this person, their audience begins to get to know who you are. 
So like D-Rock, that's what I'm talking about. This is where this whole idea came in is when I got this question instantly, this is what popped in my head is joining, making an alliance with someone and working for and being underneath someone that already has a great following and a great audience and providing all your service and working for them. It's not like you're trying to, you know, you don't want them to hire you on like a contract or like something like that. You want to be like working for them. You're going to learn a lot. You're, uh, you're going to be able to do what you love. Like just the fact that you'll be able to do videoing as, a, as your day job, like eight hours a day, you're going to fine tune your own skills and your professionalism and video, videography and photography and all of that and then design work. And so really if you want if you mentioned PR I think a huge thing for people that are wanting to get into videoing and photography and all of this stuff is if they can create be the brand ambassadors for great entrepreneurs business leaders thought leaders authors people that they respect and everything and have a great following and I think the next push is going to be for those authors, those great business leaders to be like, hey, I don't have the time. I don't want to spend all this time, you know, trying to create a YouTube channel and a social media presence. I just need to hire someone to do that and will follow me all over the place. And you will gain so much experience, so many connections. And when you create that content and put it out there and they have 100, 200,000, you know, subscribers or followers or whatever and 10,000, 20,000 people are viewing the video, the content that you're making and I guarantee you time will see it and National Geographic will see it and other people that are in your, that field, that that person you're following around all the time, uh, it, it, that in, that's in their field, uh, they're going to see your name and that's what it's all about. And so... I would recommend trying to make that alliance and that really comes down to not just videography and, and photography and all of that and creating a personal brand and kind of being someone's PR production company, which I think is going to happen in these cities like New York more and more often and where you're documenting someone's life and what they do because people want to see that. It's very interesting and people are willing to watch that stuff if they look up to someone and if you can become their production personnel uh, it, it's invaluable amount of content that you're able to gain from that. And so I, I would recommend that. Now, that being said, not just for videographers and, and people that do photography and in the media and marketing and things like that online, but it can also be for any sort of business. We talk, we, I don't talk a lot about mentorship, like there's, cause there's kind of a lot of it out there about how to find mentors and what to say and all that. But like, first of all, if you want to do, uh, Stefan, if you want to do what I'm saying right now, I, I briefly mentioned there, create a highlight reel, a video with music and like the whole bit for these these people that you would want to work for. Send it to them and say, hey, I would love to do this for you. I think there's an audience. And um, you, if you do that five or ten times, I guarantee there'll be one of them. Be like, hey, I've already been thinking about doing that. I just haven't had the time to get to it. I don't have the time to do it myself. And I would love, I, I, you know, I love this highlight reel. I, I love how you presented my brand. And I think we could work together. And you might get something. But let me go, no, I, I, I digress. Um, whether it be photography or not, I think we don't talk a lot about mentorship here on the program. Um, some people have more access to mentors than other people um, as far as physically talking to them being in the same city as them like if you're in New York you're probably gonna have a lot of mentors in your space if you're like a tech startup and things like that right um, and so but if even if even if you're not like if you live out in Timbuktu you can with the, the with the internet and the way like I look to Gary Vaynerchuk for instance as one of my mentors never talk to him in person um but i watch all his content i i see everything that he does and so i learn from him i would consider him a mentor someone like uh pat flynn i've met him in person and things but i listen to all his content and i see everything that he does and and it's it's like like my, my course uh, landscapebusinesscourse.com is probably a lot to do with <clears throat> the mentorship from pat flynn and so even though I don't live in a city that has a lot of these entrepreneurs <clears throat> and business people that I can physically go see, which is obviously a benefit, uh, you can still have a mentor and, and connect yourself with them. And you can connect with them virtually. And one of the best ways to kind of get on their radar 
is to go into their ecosystem, their their social media or their blog post, or and create and be the most thoughtful question on their blog post, or the most thoughtful question on their Instagram picture, or the most thoughtful question on their YouTube channel, and because that's going to get bumped up to the top as people like it and it becomes engaging. And then people that are following them are going to be able to look at you. And so you can create a brand of your own. But when we talk about mentors just to get on their radar, sometimes just constantly being in their ecosystem, asking the most thought, thought provoking, intelligent questions is a great way to kind of get on their, on their radar. So that's it for today. I hope you got something out of it, Stefan. Uh, I'm sorry that the live boot camp we were going to do on Skype didn't work out. Uh, I want to do more of those. But if you guys have a question out there, make sure you go to businessbootcamppodcast.com. Send me a question on how to start, grow, or save your business. I would love to put it here on the episode. Or if it doesn't make it on the episode, because we get quite a few, if it doesn't make it, I still answer every single one in person. I have not outsourced my questions and answers. It sometimes takes me a week or two to get to them, but in person I answer every single one. I set a timer, and on this one little... I get one square per question where I will write out some notes real quick while I read your question and I give you all the best answer I possibly can based upon my limited experience and what I've got out of business and school and all that stuff and my own businesses. But like I just offer as much value as I can. I think some people uh, really appreciate it and based upon the reviews and iTunes and people's feedback, that's what keeps me going. That's why we're on episode 124 and why I didn't stop at 50 is because how many people have been helped, and um, every every few days, I can't say every day, but like every few days, we, I get people emailing me saying thank you, and this is what happened to my business after listening to your podcast, and this particular thing you said has changed our business and how we market, and now we're succeeding, and, and all sorts of stuff. And like, <laughs> I mean, a few days ago, one of the most interesting ones I had was they were thanking me for telling them not to start their business, and they saw someone else try to do the same thing in their area, and it absolutely miserably failed, and they they went bankrupt. And so they were like, hey, thank you for saving us all that trouble. So that was kind of interesting. But those were that's what keeps me alive. That's like the oxygen to what I do here on the podcast is your reviews, and not just your reviews on iTunes, but like your comments or feedback saying, hey, like this has really helped us. So I really, really appreciate it. For everyone out there that is in the service-based business, check out landscapebusinesscourse.com. Check out the promo video. It's about seven minutes long. You're going to learn the five things that are keeping your small business small. And if you're interested, sign up for the webinar. It's one hour long, and I talk about how I went from zero to $100,000 in month, a month in revenue in just three years in my lawn care landscaping business. This is Mike Andy. You're listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast, episode 124. I'll see you next time.